All right, Derek has liberated us all. We can walk around the stage now. I appreciate that. All right, so um, um, my, my presentation is going to be in um, two parts. Uh, one, are millennials the student debt um, generation? And yes, the answer is yes. And then the longer part of the presentation is why? Uh, and the short answer is it's public policy. Uh, that has generated um, uh, this this um, uh, shift in debt um, and uh, has led to the millennials being the student debt generation. So let's start with um, some um, some numbers on uh, on what indebtedness looks like for this for this generation. So if you there's been a steady rise over many decades in the likelihood that college students uh, borrow. So that's been, been rising for quite some time. There's been a shift at the federal level from using grants to using uh, loans for financial aid. So if you compare just the, the millennials to, the, uh, to Gen X, you know, 40% of Gen X borrowed for college, it's 46% um, percent, um, for millennials. Note there that it's still not, everybody does not borrow, right? So uh, half of, of college students do not borrow. Um, for college. So the problem is a concentrated one, and I'm sort of going to be, going to be um, moving down um, and, and, and honing in on where the problem is concentrated. Um, uh, if you look at the amounts of debt, um, the average amounts don't look like what you tend to see in the newspaper. So what hits the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal are $100,000 in debt. Um, a woman's studies major at NYU is sort of the prototypical um, person that's put forward. Um, but really, if you think about if, if the, the median person who has student debt in the US, and in particular, the median person who has trouble with that student debt is somebody who went to a community college or a for-profit college for a couple of years. Uh, or even just a year, dropped out and actually has very little debt, has about $5,000 in debt. The typical debt that's in default is about $5,000. The big debts tend to go with people who, uh, who borrowed for graduate school, and people who go to graduate school, by definition, made it through and got a BA, and then they've gone on to graduate school, and they're very unlikely to, um, um, to default on their loans. Okay, um, uh, if we look at um, where the defaults are concentrated, so student loan default is when you don't pay your student loan. Uh, the definition of it is, is, a, is a, um, um, a federal definition. Just about all student loans at this point are federal loans. And what we're comparing here are people who entered um, repayment um, in 2000 and those who entered in 2011. Um, so you could sort of think of these as Gen Xers and, 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 and Millennials. Um, and the default rate uh, is for um, those who go to two-year colleges, for-profit colleges for Millennials, north of 25%. Um, and I'm going to explain in a little bit where I think that's coming from. Um, and that's where the, the distress is concentrated. Those are very small debts, as I said. Folks coming out of the two-year colleges in particular are coming out with just a few thousand dollars in debt. They're a bit larger, um, uh, in some cases quite a bit larger, uh, at the for-profits. Uh, you can see at the top there, people who are coming out with graduate debt don't tend to um, uh, default at all. Right. Um, being somebody who's graduated from a selective four-year institution or has a graduate degree, um, you've been buffered um, from um, the worst of the labor market. We saw that in the, in the earnings data. Right? So the problem is not among those who graduate from elite institutions, um, no matter how many videos you see of them on presidential campaign um, websites, uh, they are not the problem. Um, it is people at community colleges and for-profit colleges that are uh, facing the problems. So um, I, have, I have arrows in boxes. Um, um, so uh, you know, all of this, uh, the, as I said, we've got trends over time in what's been happening uh, in terms of borrowing. But the Great Recession accelerated and made worse um, a lot of these trends. And it was the millennials who were hit. So recessions are terrible labor markets. Terrible, terrible labor markets drive people into college. This has historically been true, right? Great way to spend time when labor is getting paid not very much is to leave the labor market and go invest in human capital. So this has happened for a long time. Uh, so people fled um, uh, the labor market, not just young people, but people who were already in the labor force. Um, went in, non-traditional students, we call them, uh, people in their late 20s, 30s. Um, uh, so more people went to college. At the same time, over on the right, the recession led 
uh, states to reduce their um, spending on their public colleges. 80% of undergraduates go to public colleges. And 50% of undergraduates at some point touch a community college. So it might be even higher than that. So public colleges are the extensive margin that flexes when something happens, like a recession. And they are the extensive margin that brings in, um, in particular, disadvantaged students. So this is what we got to worry about when we're, when we're thinking about people going from the labor market into colleges. It's the public colleges. So recession, states have to balance their budgets. They can't run deficits. They cut spending on their community colleges. Uh, the community colleges uh, hike up their tuition prices. And by the way, that, that drop in spending has been uh, many decades uh, trend that accelerated during the Great Recession. So tuition prices have been going up at public colleges because the states are taking money away from the public colleges. If you look at what the total cost of college is and how much spending there is per student on, 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 on education and public institutions, it's about what it has been. But it's been shifted from the states paying it to families and students paying it. So it looks like it costs more to go to college. And we have all of these, these navel-gazing conferences and papers about why does college cost more. It's because the government's not paying for it anymore. And we are paying for it. And therefore, it looks more expensive to us. But it is not mostly the story of lazy rivers. It is a story of disinvestment um, uh, of the public sector. So tuition prices go up. Um, more people are going to college. Uh, the public colleges, you know, what they can do is they can raise tuition or they can essentially restrict um, uh, access. Community colleges are open access. They can't say, well, you don't have good enough grades, you can't come. They're open access institutions. What they can do is run wait lists for their, um, for their classes. They can, um, uh, uh, they can um, restrict access to more expensive STEM degrees, for example. It's cheaper to teach English than it is to, to teach um, a welding class. Um, so uh, the public colleges are, are overwhelmed. They're, um, they're overflowing, and people can't get into classes. There's a literature on, on all of this. Um, and this pushes students into for-profit colleges. So enrollment at the for-profit colleges uh, reached an all-time high during the Great Recession. And as if, if you've been listening to this narrative, I'm telling that is a public policy created event. That is, we, during, in the face of the Great Recession, we cut off funding to the public institutions. And where students go if they can't get into the community colleges is the for-profits. It is the same market. It is the same set of students, disadvantaged students, um, non-traditional students, um, um, students of color. Uh, go to both set of institutions. So when we choke, when we, when we starve the community colleges, students go to the for-profits, which cost far more. So they charge prices that look more like Harvard than like a local community college. So people come out of these institutions with enormous debt. So we see more, more borrowing both uh, at the public colleges. So students were much more likely to borrow um, uh, at community college uh, for millennials than they had been in previous generations. The students who went to the for-profits also borrowed. So these two sectors account for most of the spike in borrowing during the, during the Great Recession. Going to a community college is a, is a good deal. Um, people get a good return on that. You tend to see an improvement in labor market outcomes um, after people have gone to community college. Going to for-profits is not a good deal. So the evidence we have is that the return to going to a for-profit college is precisely zero. So people went to these institutions, took out enormous debts, and got no labor market return. And then they exited into a crappy labor market, which is what got them into college in the first place. Right? So they couldn't wait out the entire recession because we had a tough one and a long one. So they come out with debt, and they didn't get any um, education as a result of it, and they go into default. And so the defaults are concentrated, as I said, among the for-profits and the two-year institutions. Do not think of somebody with a BA, a graduate of an elite institution, or anybody who's got a law degree, for example. Those are not the story of student loan debt distress. It is um, the disadvantaged students who went to for-profits and two-year um, institutions. So you know, essentially, millennials hit um, um, a perfect storm. Um, uh, they um, faced more crowded um, colleges and higher tuition than previous generations had. And um, you know, this was an intergenerational transfer. So if you think of, of the baby boomers, the baby boomers went to, uh, to colleges that had been supported by high taxes uh, and the public sector and got low tuition. They were able to pay just a few thousand uh, uh, a year, much less in some cases. Um, in California, a couple of hundred um, per quarter you could pay to go to one of the CALs. 
Uh, and once they had their degrees, they stepped out and started a tax revolt. And that tax revolt led to less investment in public education. And their children, as a result, are having to uh, uh, pay much higher prices um, for college. So the millennials um, um, got hit um, by uh, a long-term trend in disinvestment in public colleges, a long-term shift in federal policy from grants towards loans, and um, the Great Recession as, as something that multiplied all of these problems. Um, so there's got to be another recession. As an economist, I'm an MIT-trained economist, um, there will be another recession. <laughs> another recession is coming. We're not going to stop it. What we can do is change how we respond to it. So we have um, a, a shredded... Um, uh, um, you might call it a safety net, right? So a shock absorber for recessions is community colleges. Uh, and um, uh, if we don't get funding up for those institutions, we're going to see the same problems again. We're going to see a surge in for-profit enrollment. We're going to see a surge in defaults. Um, public policy as it's moving right now, federal policy in terms of regulation of the for-profits, for example, um, uh, has been going um, backwards. Uh, so um, uh, I thank you um, for listening to another in a series of depressing presentations um, uh, this morning.